A robust jobs report released last week had investors smiling, but was it as good as it seemed to be? In this week's Fastest Four, another reminder of how the headline doesn't always tell the whole story. Hello again, I'm Scott Inman. Well, when I was growing up, I was an announcer for my local radio station, and I remember playing country music, reading the weather forecast, and many other things, but one of the most memorable was playing and listening to Paul Harvey. Maybe you remember that segment. It was called The Rest of the Story. Paul Harvey would take a fascinating story and tell it pretty much backwards, telling the details and circumstances of a person or event without telling you who or what it was until the end. That was the rest of the story. Well, sometimes we need to do that with economic data. Take the jobs report released last week. The report showed a 467,000 increase in non-farm payrolls not only well above the consensus expected of 125,000, but also well above the highest forecast from any economic group. When you see numbers that far apart in the positive direction, your first thought is things are going really well. But thanks to our friend Brian Westbury at First Trust Advisors, there needs to be a closer look. He looked at the number of hours worked, and that part of the report was not strong at all. Average weekly hours per worker declined to 34.5 in January from 34.7 in December. So as a result, the total number of hours worked fell 0.3%, the largest decline in almost a year. According to Westbury, if that drop had come in the form of fewer jobs while the number of hours per worker didn't change at all, private payrolls would have declined about 350,000 in January. Another seemingly positive number, according to Westbury, was from civilian employment, an alternate measure of jobs that includes small business startups. Jobs in this measurement rose almost 1.2 million in January, appearing to confirm the strength of the headline growth in payrolls. Meanwhile, it looked like the labor force, that's the number of people working or looking for work, grew almost 1.4 million. Not so fast, says Westbury. Every January, the Labor Department inserts into the jobs report new Consensus Bureau estimates on the total size of the U.S. population, which in turn affects the numbers on the labor force and employment. That population adjustment was responsible for all the increase in civilian employment and the labor force in January. Without that quirk, labor would have reported a 272,000 drop in civilian employment and a big decline in the labor force. Now here's another one. Finally, average hourly earnings grew 0.7% in January. That's certainly a rapid pace and very likely outpaced inflation in January, but these wages are up only 5.7% in the past year, which is almost certainly slower than inflation over the same 12 months and is really no reason to celebrate. Now, this doesn't mean the report was bad news. We bring this up to tell you it doesn't also mean we are about to sink into a recession. What it does mean is that the news is usually not as bad or as good as it seems. And for investors trying to reach financial independence, the barrage of data that comes out constantly should not drastically change your investment strategy. Your financial plan should dictate your moves, not the data. And that's the rest of the story. Thanks for watching.